Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch One, and thanks for logging on. Today, we are looking at the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore reference 26470ST. Now, this was arguably the star of Audemars Piguet's Salon International in 2014. In Geneva that year, the company really rolled out an entire overhaul of the offshore line, but of those new references, this one, with the blue dial and orange accents, was the one that really made waves, so to speak. So, AP knows that the offshore has become a beloved icon in its own right, no longer a derivative of the Royal Oak. It stands separate and distinct, and you don't mess with an icon, not one that is so important to so many people. You refine, you don't redefine. So this watch is all about subtle enhancements, and I do believe that taken as a whole, the more you look at it, the more you realize, like when you scrutinize a page in Where's Waldo, it's all the little nuances that jump out at you that really make the entire composition and make the experience. This watch is a subtle but serious and seriously deft refinement of the original. So let's focus on the differences first, and we'll get to the fit aspects later on, because I think people want to know, how does it differ from the prior model? And I'm happy to say that I've got a little friend right here to help me demonstrate. Now this is the reference 26170ST. So in many respects, although it's not a one-for-one -one swap, this is very similar to what we would call the direct predecessor of the 26470. And I want to draw your attention first and foremost to the crowns and the pushers, as well as the crown guards, because we're going to move from the case into the dial. And I want to focus on the silicone on the older reference, it caps the pushers and it caps the crown, and it has since the original reference bowed at Basel in 1993. Well, as of 2014, those are now sharp, faceted, crisp, beautifully detailed, and made from nearly scratch-proof ceramic. So it's a different look, it's a different feel, and it's really characteristic of the entire revision. Everything's just a little bit bolder, a little bit more crisp, and that continues on the crown guards themselves. Now you can see on the 26170, the crown guards are substantial, but they're a little bit more of a linear, unbroken sweep up from the flank of the case. Here, new definition lines, character lines, have been added, and that extra definition really gives the watch a broader-shouldered, more substantial, almost more angular look. It's a little bit more mechanical, it's a little bit less fluid than this one, but it has an inherent strength. Those rectilinear geometries, whenever you have those square profiles on the side and the jutting, strident, sharp lines defining them on the top, you're going to get strength. And that's what Audemars Piguet achieves with the combination of the faceted ceramic and the new redefined, bolder, and more detailed crown guards. Now moving inward, nuance continues to greet us when we reach the date window. Now traditionally, because all offshores are modular, well all men's offshores are modular chronographs, the chronograph mechanism sits on top of the base movement, so you're actually staring down past the module through a little tunnel to the date disc, and you can see that the date disc previously was not the same color as the dial. Now monotone integrated much more elegantly, reads as more of a whole, and the date doesn't read as a separate, distinct, distracting portion. However, fine finishes the rule, so you can see AP now includes this polished chapter ring around the date window itself. So that's a beautiful little flourish that highlights the date without becoming distracting, as some consider the old contrasting date disc to be. Moreover, the AP itself, no longer printed, now applied white gold like the Arabic numerals themselves. And those numerals, rather than the printed style of the former references, now all white gold and applied. While there are some examples of the prior models that did feature applied white gold, that is now the rule across the board. Moreover, the hands themselves have changed. Previously, you had these white gold polished outlines featuring the lumet center. Now, you have a tripartite hand, faceted and angled off of each side. The loom is a strip down the center with a high contrast diamond polished white gold hand that's a little bit broader, has a little bit more of a metallic impression to it than the previous hand which read more as a palette for the loom itself. This reads as a little bit more metallic, this reads more as a palette covered in luminescent material. Now the hand is also distinct, previously more of a true lancet, it now features a prominent metallic counterweight bulb 
and here you can see it's blazoned with that signature orange color that provides the secondary accent to this dial. The subdials themselves are revised as well. They now feature a rather prominent chapter ring, still guilloche in each case. The guilloche is just a little bit more pronounced in this modern reference, with the inner dial being a little bit more sunken in relation to the concentric circular guilloche of that outer chapter ring. And of course, the calibration of each dial has changed. No more numerals at the constant seconds at 12 o'clock. The spacing and length of the indices at 9 o'clock has changed. And of course, you can see that the numerals have been pressed to the center of the subdial, the hours register, at 6 o'clock, rather than spread out and separated by a cruciform pattern. Finally, I just want to call attention to the tapisserie itself. Now, the mega tapisserie is iconic of the offshore, but the bottom line is that the new one features just a bit more definition. The actual ridges, the little waffle or hobnail squares within the tapisserie are and this is a continuing recurring theme in the new reference, a little bit more distinct, a little bit better defined. They're smaller individually, but the channels between them have been hollowed out, have been spaced out a little bit more. So now it reads more as a grid. It has really more of a waffle iron cut to it, just a little bit crisper, as so much else is on this newer reference. Now, they're both classics, but they definitely have a different character, and they read differently. You could see that the beveling along the flanks of the case Likewise, just a little bit sharper on the new reference, although the case and the bezel represent the portions of the watch that have undergone the least transformation. But when you turn it over, this is where we really take a quantum leap over the old model. This is the first of the serially produced 42 millimeter offshores to feature a display case back. Now, while the in-house movement is not new to the 42 millimeter offshore, the ability to see it certainly is and it's a beauty. Now, I mean, this goes without saying. If you've got that degree of fine finish from a Swiss holy trinity high horology house known for its finish, you want to put it on display, and that's where the new reference pulls strongly ahead of the old one. I want to focus on that movement because it's an extraordinary one. Still the same Audemars Piguet in-house 3126 base movement attached to a 3840 vertical clutch chronograph 50 hour power reserve, you can see the full balance bridge with the Gyromax style, effectively free sprung escapement, very stable, very shock resistant, also very resistant to positional variation. And the watch features the latest standards in automatic winding, a true 22 carat, not 21, not 18, not some sort of tungsten, but a 22 carat rose gold winding rotor blazoned with the family crests of the still active, controlling Audemars and Piguet families. Running the company since 1875, we are talking about the oldest continuously family-run watchmaker in Switzerland. That's a major achievement, like the movement in the watch itself. Now, it pivots on ceramic rotor bearings, unlubricated, highly efficient. They orbit their metal race with the effortless ease of very round, very hard, and very durable balls that are essentially sealed for life and never need maintenance. And that reduces a type of wear and tear that frequently becomes a maintenance item on conventional automatic watches. As I've seen rotor replacements, bearing replacements become costly service items down the line on conventional older watches with the steel bearings. Ceramic, not only does it sound different, but it's more efficient, it lasts longer, and it saves you money down the line. And while saving money isn't necessarily the point of a watch like this, Every little bit of attention to detail counts, and AP does sweat the details. Every edge is beautifully camfered. The Cote de Genève features exquisite detailing. All the screw heads are polished, and their slots camfered. The perlage on the base plate is tight and even, very beautiful. And of course, all elements from the wheels of the, for instance, the crown wheel right here, to the wheels of the train just peeking out. They have that brass color with their circular graining. The sunburst or soleil pattern on the crown wheels, everything is top-notch. Although Audemars Piguet is not part of the canton or city of Geneva, the finishing standard certainly belongs to that tradition, and Audemars Piguet can hold its head high alongside its counterparts at Vacheron and Patek Philippe. This new reference, sharper in every way, and yet very much in the tradition of the 1993 Emmanuel Geit oversized classic sports watch, it's every inch an offshore, it's every inch a Royal Oak, 
And I'm going to end by talking about the fit, which is unchanged. Now on my wrist, six and a third inches, 16 centimeters. I know exactly what I'm wearing when I strap this on. And with the full bracelet, you get an element of integration, a nice counterweight to the heavy watch head, and additional hand finishing quality that even a hornback or AP's high quality rubber strap simply can't match. And in that sense, this example on the full bracelet is more of a throwback to the 1972 Gerald Genta original. All of a piece, like a beautiful article of jewelry, bracelet, case, bezel, and dial. It reads as one. It wears beautifully, even on a smaller wrist. It feels as wonderful as it looks. Redefined, or perhaps I should say refined for 2014. This is the current generation Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore 26470ST, available from Watch You Want.